Thank you. Well, thank you very much for the introduction. Um, I want to start by saying that I, I used to play American football uh, about 45 pounds ago. <laughs> um, <laughs> 20 kilos, there you go. But nobody will understand <laughs> metric systems, right? And, um, and what I hear since I was a kid is that uh, you are as good as your last snap or as good as the, the, the man standing next to you. And what I'm bringing this story to you is not that I want to evangelize American football, uh, uh, but it's just about what the, the role of an expert is in an organization, and also what the role of metrics are in an organization. I, and I hope that, that this talk will, will uh, dig into the value that metrics have, have brought to, uh, to the team that I work with. Um, non, none of the things that I will say will have any, any impact on you if I don't put a little bit of context so uh, ING is one of the largest banks in Europe. We try to bring digital experiences to our clients. And in my particular case, I work uh, doing algorithms and trying to make sense of, of certain problems, reducing complexity. Um, and, and part of the talk, it's going to be um, uh, just going through, through this path of our learnings and, and how we sort of complement our expertise with, with metrics. Uh, now, that being said, I'm the only one here standing between you and your lunch, so I wanted to captivate you with saying, okay, this is the reason why I think it's important for you to stay. So the takeaways. For us to, to come to a metric, th there is a huge hype of, of uh, us being a data-driven organization or, or backing up our decision. Uh, right now, we are sort of fundamenta uh, fundamentally thinking about engineer decision engineering or, or meaning how can we come across uh, with, with uh, information that, that is backed up by a data point. Um, so we have this, this idea of, of going crazy with metrics. Uh, by that, uh, what we have also is, uh, well, coined certain terms that have been used in the IT industry for a long time, uh, including the mean time to resolution. Uh, we uh, also, in this journey of finding things and bringing expertise and metrics all together, uh, we, we find a lot of stuff that were outside of the domain that we were working. Uh, one of those examples is uh, through the, the, the collection of a huge amount of metrics. We saw that uh, process queue lengths were really high, and that means that our VMware guys in another building were actually uh, overbooking our appliances. So uh, again, to bring some context to the organization, our, the systems that we run in, in mortgages in the mortgages department uh, is, is um, mainly workflow management system. Uh, document management systems, so if you think about the, the acquisition of a house or the journey of, of acquiring a house or living in a new place, it's a very data-intensive process. You need to give uh, salary specifications, you give to uh, your, your uh, marital status, so th there is a lot of interchange of data, and we now have a combined source of uh, system metrics and business metrics, um, but we still, to some degree, work in this large IT landscape where uh, it's difficult to steer a big boat. <laughs> And we still uh, uh, collaborate with other teams that, uh, for instance, uh, provide us these uh, uh, our appliances. We work in a hybrid environment where part of our infrastructure runs on bare metal, part of our infrastructure runs in our internal private cloud. So therefore, we still need to uh, uh, have liaisons with other, other teams. Uh, in the team, we have backgrounds of, of Java expertise. Uh, so uh, we started to explore our, our provider or the software provider use is, is a .NET application. Then, as I mentioned, it's a workflow management system. Um, so we were not, uh, by any means, gurus of the CLR or the uh, common language runtime. I'm not going to go deeper on that. But uh, the use of metrics and going into, into memory patterns allow us uh, to expand or broaden our knowledge of, of how this technology works and therefore come more with more uh, ammunition to the meetings to, um, to, to have discussions about the operation. And then finally, I want to share with you, this is not a, a, a one-size-fits-all, fit but it's basically what worked for us. I always tend to say that a problem is like a pyramid. You, you need to approach it from different angles. And uh, f uh, what I would like to present to you is simply the, the approach that worked for us. Uh, it's not the, 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 the you need to go through the same path, but it's the path that uh, helped steer a big boat with an organization that has legacy uh, systems with legacy uh, 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 processes and methodologies. Um, and for that, I would like to know who's, who's, who's working solo. 
in implementing Inflex. Can you please raise your hands? Who is working in a team together to, to put uh, Inflex together? Okay, a uh, few more hands. Okay, for those who are uh, uh, in a team, uh, sometimes you will have to, um, to think about, okay, uh, metrics are everywhere and it's a new goal, the data and all these kind of things, but at the, the bottom line is that you will have to convince people about the value of this. And I tend to say that, that uh, people don't buy drills, <laughs> people buy holes. So if you come with the idea of metrics, okay, fine, but uh, w what you're really getting into is, is the expertise, the value, the insight that you can get out of these metrics. Now, in the bank, you tend to see the, the role of an expert, of this guy that has this magic book and knows absolutely everything, all the interfaces, all the different systems, from the point where, where the bank was created to the moment where now we are, we are selling mortgages. Uh, I don't tend to quote, so I try to laugh a little bit about who I'm using quotes for. So <laughs> I, my son has this favorite movie because uh, it's Ratatouille, and then <laughs> he said, well, anyone can cook. Well, anyone can do metrics. Anyone can be an expertise nowadays. He come to a meeting and he said, oh, I see this YouTube uh, channel, and they said, oh, okay, well, hold on a second. There is a big difference between knowledge and experience. We, we cannot uh, uh, compare experience wi with knowledge, the fact that you have seen it in, in, in a phone time or after a shower <laughs> doesn't mean that, 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 that you do it. Uh, uh, so th uh, it's important to recognize expertise by the people that, that uh, have experience or have implemented something. And, I, and it's not just about having this book next to them, knowing the, uh, how they do it, but also how they, they did it. How do they complement that? Uh, and the other part of experts, uh, I would say, is apart from being having the patience to, to motivate people to um, implement something by doing it, it's also open enough to, uh, to adopt new stuff or to learn from the people that are coming and bringing new technologies. Now, uh, an expert without metrics wouldn't be an expert. <laughs> I wanted to show uh, an image that looks some modern, agile uh, approach of what metrics are. Um, uh, so, so as I said, we have a team of, of experts, but, but uh, we wanted to empower people within the team with something that will help them to develop that expertise in the doing. And by that, I, I also, uh, uh, of one of the ways that we see it is that uh, these type of experts are, are, are now fading out and, and, and a new type of expert is coming to. And what I believe is that uh, expert will, will not be replaced by, by metrics or by machine learning or the way that that, uh, that uh, is being coined now in the industry, but, but, but I think that experts who don't use metrics or machine learning will be replaced. So I think the use needs to converge at some point and understand that it's a complementary activity, one between the other. So now I would like to dive into the argument. So what, what was the argument in a particular use case? So uh, as I said, it's a big boat difficult to steer, we need to make smaller steps to uh, convey our message of why we need to, to collect metrics and, and, and go uh, deep into this expertise metrics approach. The first one was granularity. And I want to uh, 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 remember one was, what was one of our first uh, uh, challenges uh, to, to bring granularity. We have an old legacy systems a system that was collecting certain metrics, system metrics, so we didn't have a correlation between business metrics. Uh, to give you more context on it, we uh, sell about 1,000 uh, uh, mortgage applications a week. When it's happy days and champagne goes <laughs> into the show, <laughs> then it's uh, about 2,000. We work in a, in a, there is something called the hypo uh, uh, hypothek or mortgage data network that splits all the, 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 the market share on mortgages in the Netherlands. Um, and therefore, we, we always looked into, okay, how can we increase our market share by providing a better service or lowering the time for you to acquire a house. Uh, and for that, we run a lot of performance testing when this hype of when we lower the rates, we get a, a hype of, of mortgage applications coming in. So it's very important that we maintain uh, uh, our response times and, and we don't get our, our customer loyalty members or CLT, the people that are in the phone handling the mortgage application process coming back to us to say, guys, the system is just not moving. <laughs> Can you please do something? Well, normal IT operations. Um, so for, for us to run performance testing or to, to be able to reproduce um, uh, realistic scenarios, is, it was also to get the gra granularity in the metrics that we were obtaining from, from all our systems. 
uh, in our legacy systems, just to run a query from three months or one year would take seconds, and, and it was annoying, <laughs> let's just put it that way. It, it was a big plus for us to, to see that adopting inflows will help us to reduce that time to, to, to gather or to extract that data. So a big plus on, on that part. Um, we have Telegraph. Uh, again, it's, it's, it's not trying to uh, expose all our challenges, but part of it is that we had to go through a white listing process for the technology, so Telegraph had to pass through our security teams to go and say, can we use this in our production environments? Can, can we use this agent? And because it's a lightweight agent, it's all composed, it doesn't have hundreds of configurations, it's just one file. Also simplify the process just for us to use uh, this metric cheaper. So another uh, element that helped us to, to, to quickly jump into, into the metric boat was to have this, this uh, uh, simplistic use of the technology. Uh, fast uh, aggregation queries. So uh, with in our previous platform, and again, it's not making <laughs> a fire from the fallen tree, but it, it was just simply impossible. As soon as you started uh, seeing the cardinality and the different series that we wanted to collect, it was just trying to, to imagine that I'm trying to say, guys, there is a movie over there. Tell me who the actors are in this movie, and then just looking at two pixels. And, and that's pretty much <laughs> What, what we were trying to, or what we were facing, uh, it was very hard for us to say where, or to pinpoint where the problem areas were in, in our systems because we didn't have any visibility. And we didn't have any visibility because we couldn't extract the data. And when we wanted to extract the data, it was taking ages. So a big plus uh, on, on that area, and, and that also helped us to, um, to convey why, why we needed this. Exploration and dashboards, I, I think during the course of the day, you have seen, uh, well, the, the, the abilities that, that we have to explore data, to, to very quickly create representations of that data, whether are graphical or, or, or uh, statistical information about them. Uh, uh, there is an education process on this part about uh, which, which uh, uh, aggregations are meaningful. I spend a lot of time just to say, guys, don't look into the means, go to the uh, uh, percentiles, especially when you uh, uh, go, uh, looked into, uh, uh, into response times. It, it's important to see what is the, 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 for the majority of the users, the response times that, that uh, you will get as opposed to a very skewed view of it like the mean, or make use of other, uh, other aggregation elements or statistical tools that allow you to see the variance or, or the range of, of, of change that the, the certain metric is, 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 is uh, 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 being uh, modified with. Uh, of course, we have alerts. One uh, big plus is that we have an alerting mechanism. We have a master control room. It's a little bit about old-fashioned alerts go to a centralized place. That place is the one who controls who gets notified. There is different roles. There is a hierarchy of, uh, or hierarchy of, 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 of people that gets notified according to the, the severity. Of, of, of the elements, so a plus one for capacitor. It was a minus one for capacitor, <laughs> sorry, Tim, <laughs> for on learning, <laughs> on learning uh, the, the tick stack. It, I mean, when you get people on board and excited about it, then a couple of uh, months later, it's like, guys, it's gone. <laughs> Didn't uh, went very well, so go quickly on that. Um, and IT strategy, I think this was a very fundamental part for us to, to jump in. And uh, I use the bracket uh, uh, notation, but it's, it's just more about, uh, I'll put an analogy, which is robbing the bank, right? It doesn't matter if you get into the vault. At the end of the day, you also need to get out. And for us, it was the same with the data. You can get data in. We have our internal private cloud. So it was very important that whatever decision, technology decision we made, there has to be an entry strategy and an exit strategy. We have that with inflows. They don't lock you down, and that means uh, very uh, uh, much flexibility that we are, uh, or we were searching for. Uh, there is exp uh, a, a team that is exploring the ability for us to run containerized services in the bank uh, uh, for the security and for the risk profile of, of containers. I think in, in our particular use case, having landed in the, in the safe area, However, we could use containers to run our InfluxDB. It has given us a lot of advantages. It will also give us a lot of pain. <laughs> but, um, but it was also a plus in the valuation. The fact that there is an open source version uh, helped us also to convey the message of why we needed to use this. It was very easy. Uh, and again, all of these things, more than palms on the back, is more to say, well, if you are about to, to talk to your, to your peers, to your colleagues about 
uh, embracing metrics or talking about metrics in your organization and the value, all of these things at some point will have to, to come down or converge into what, what value means. Uh, and finally, it was fun. I think when, <laughs> when you work for a bank for more than 20 years and you are using different things and somebody come up and said, guys, let's try to do something a little bit uh, fun, <laughs> or because if you say different or change, it's uh, a little bit of, of <laughs> who are you, where, where do you live? <laughs> uh, it, it was fun, to be honest, just to, to jump in into something different, to, s to see a one single integrated stack solution that can eat all you can eat metrics, and then suddenly you have an exploration and a dashboard. So for us, it, it might seem uh, outdated, but again, I think the, the Cinderella story behind it is, uh, I, I don't think implementing technology is real a challenge anymore, or, or I don't think that, that uh, uh, yeah, the embracing of a new technology or a process is a challenging thing anymore. But trying to change the way that people work is a real challenge. <laughs> it's like changing habits. <laughs> So I, I think that's that's where uh, I guess the core the, the core part of, of, of this presentation is all about. That's that's where I think the value is that it, it helps you to develop good good habits, and those habits will sort of help you to transform an organization into uh, an expert. Back it up with data. Now uh, I wanted to do a quiz time. It might it might sound a little bit ridiculous, but it was more to say, okay, this is the way that we as an organization started to find out that we were becoming a little bit more metrics-based and expert-based. When we started to lose the names and the corporate IDs or email addresses of the people, and we started to talk about cardinality. Or, uh, so we said, okay, does cardinality mean to you like a map or more the number of items per index that you have or how many tasks your, your series have? Another way to find out if your team is more metrics or expert-based is to talk about hot winters. I was talking with my partner and said, hot winters? How, how global warming <laughs> is influencing your... No, 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 hot winter. It's my pronunciation, my Latin uh, probably <laughs> way of, of, of expressing it. But uh, suddenly people that never had any, let's say, a statistical background or, or working with ARIMA models started to, to say, you know, we started to see these patterns uh, and, and, and we see, we started to using ARIMA models. I, I'm not going into the statistical part, which is, I can talk the rest of the day for it, but um, but it was more about the the, the, the elements or the stati statistical foundation that will help us to make decisions as well, and forecasting, seasonality is that more related to an allergy or pattern. So <laughs> suddenly we started to to have communications about these things. We decompose. We started to play about Fou Fourier transforms to, to see or to decompose the signals and see all these metric uh, uh, time series as, as different signals and see that indeed we have seasonality in areas that we didn't expect seasonality. We have the certain noise uh, uh, and started differentiating between signal and noise. And that was a, a, a really a, a, a revelation for, for people to, to see, wow, can we correlate this event with this other event? And, and to find these correlations in a very simplistic way was, was also something that, that kept people motivated and, and helped them to feel empowered as experts, right, when, when, when embarking in this idea of, of using metrics. Now, this is part of, of our learnings. Uh, this is part of our journey of uh, of the use of metrics. I, I think Influx Days embarks into, okay, how, how do we use metrics? Um, uh, I, I hope that by now all, all these uh, uh, examples that I've presented to you give you an idea of, of what is to, to embark with the team and get people involved and the areas that are important for, for understanding if your organization is indeed valuing metrics. Now, uh, not everything was perfect, and we had definitely a lot of learnings, a lot of, uh, uh, let's say, uh, steps that we sort of uh, uh, hurt a lot. And I would like also to share those with you. Uh, well, first of all, I think that following a little bit of game theory will help. <coughs> and by that, <coughs> excuse me, what I mean is to, to perhaps not dive into what the technology does behind the scenes, but but clearly know what the mechanics are. What, what, what is the, <laughs> the, uh, the, the storage engine? Where, where does my data go? Uh, what is this wall? 
that, that stores different entry points. And, and for us, understanding the mechanics of shipping metrics and storing metrics was very important to sort of get a clear understanding and talk the same language. Then we move into the dynamics of how do we uh, uh, move or ship data. One of the biggest reasons why we embark in this adoption of InfluxDB was for us to gain confidence or to develop confidence. If we couldn't convince ourselves about what we were looking at, it was going to be very difficult for us to convince other people or to, to make our, our uh, uh, advice reliable. So developing confidence is, is uh, I would say, underestimated sometimes. And then finally, in the aesthetics, and it's equally important. All of these three things should be uh, resonate to you uh, to, to some degree, but it will have to definitely be part of, of the things that, that, that you need to work on. Um, something that is not appealing to the eye will not attract anybody <laughs> to, to look at, and then nobody will, will uh, pay attention to, to your dashboard. So think about how, how do I make it easy for people to interpret, and how do I make this um, dashboard appealing to the eye so that, so that people can or would like to, to consume it. Uh, as I said, one of the biggest advantages for us was to operate with containers. Somehow we were not the people orchestrating or managing all the, the platform level of, of our, our container solution, uh, but we, we, we lost data uh, due to the fact that we're stored in logical volumes, they were fed up, so we have to store, uh, stop an instance of InfluxDB start another instance, back it up, and it was a little bit of a mess. Uh, I have to say, I've, uh, one of the reasons I said we are a metrics base is that I've never got a call at 7 a.m. in the morning to say, well, you know, something is, is going wrong or uh, uh, kind of operations to some degree. Uh, we don't have any uh, uh, more prior, uh, priority one uh, issues. Uh, but I did got a call in the morning to say, Herminio, Something is happening, and I was like, okay, <laughs> something bad. As I'm from Mexico, the, the Mexicans are the, the guilty ones, right? So what is going on with the metrics? As uh, we are losing data, we are losing data. <laughs> Where, the mortgages? No, our influx is down. And it's like, oh, what, what happened? The containers are fed up. Well, it cost us a lot just to revert and do all these kind of things because we were in a sort of uh, glorified POC that uh, suddenly become our real production environment. So. If, if you have containers or if you have your data, keep it safe, put it in a place where you can back it up and restore it. That was a big learning for us. And I, it might sound like a no-brainer, but sometimes when you try to do things quick, you, you tend to overlook into, into these things. Uh, again, once we were in the ride and we were like a champs, we have a lot of data, all you can eat, all we started to uh, create this overwhelming uh, amount of, of, of metrics collected from absolutely everything, uh, we started to experience some slowdown after the first uh, first 12 months. And that's because we said, okay, infinity, yeah, we like the infinity logo in our time series, why we will put retention policies? So it will slow you down. It, I, I think in our case, it did slow us down because we started, as I mentioned, to combine system metrics, business metrics, we started to put observability into logs, and, and we said, okay, if we can do one, we can do 10. Well, uh, we, we, we saw the value of just clicking a place and then uh, establish a, a retention policy and then just move data in sort of sinks that move uh, uh, our data across. Uh, one thing that I remember very clearly is like to say um, uh, one of our main stakeholders is, is, is a step up. We have this 15-inch uh, uh, monitors and, and you can interact with them and, and you can see all the different metrics that we are collecting and we're starting staring at them and, and say, but can, can you explain if the red is good or if the high is good? Or People will, will create their own interpretations about their graphs. It's not you, uh, I mean, when, when you expect somebody to understand it or have the same level of understanding of what you're looking at, it's, it, it's they are going to create their own interpretation. Therefore, I will say, don't make assumptions. Create annotations. Help people to, uh, uh, let's say, lower the barrier entry for in, in the interpretation of your graphs. And that is something important. I think in one of the latest uh, versions, you can now create annotations and put the specific events that describe the phenomenon that you are looking into your graphs. 
And I think that is something uh, very important that, that, that you need to consider, especially in that aesthetics parts of your metric journey. And I wanted just to, to say, okay, uh, all of these things is what have uh, brought us from point A to B. We would like to be more ambitious in our, in our uh, journey with, with metrics. Uh, one of the things that we realize is that, well, we have to learn flux. Uh, we are starting uh, again with, with, our, with our learning process, understanding the different uh, syntax, the, the, the uh, playing around with it. We see a lot of uh, opportunities for the team to also get excited about learning flux. I hope that the momentum keeps there. Uh, in, in the other hand, we are trying also to use uh, more advanced learning mechanisms. We are doing a lot of the composition and analysis. Uh, we got so excited that uh, one of the, uh, in the time that we, we lost data, we started to think about, should we make a contribution to, to the community? And that was for me a revealing time for like, oh, these guys want to make a contribution. I mean, they didn't want to change a monitoring tool. And now we were thinking about writing an imputer uh, a, a plugin so that uh, when you lose data, you can use a k-means algorithm to tell you what kind of uh, uh, values were the same ones on the last, uh, let's say, three seasons or four seasons. So that was very important, but, but we, will, we will not, uh, not stop there. As I said, we, we are after the hole, not the drill. So metrics is the drill, uh, but we would like to, to show what all the value and the insight that metrics can give to an organization. So long, short-term memory. And networks is, is, is one of the vehicles that we are seeing, especially for treating our business uh, KPIs or business metrics or advanced learning. Uh, the other thing that uh, it was also like a fun uh, exercise is that uh, dashboard don't scale. So uh, as I said, we have these massive screens and you need to keep scrolling. And uh, not all the people, so, so we have kind of created segregated areas of our dashboard. So people look into specific areas and the experts or the database are on that side, the uh, uh, applications is on the other side. And, and we see that, that uh, it, it's becoming more a convoluted environment with graphs. People are, tend to get lost. And the other thing is uh, we see that the consumers of, that, of those graphs are not only technical oriented people. What that means is that uh, we would like or lower also the, the <laughs> entry barrier to consume this data. And one of the ideas is that we have connected uh, uh, our, our um, uh, influx, or in this case, our chronograph, with uh, Mattermost, with a local instance of Mattermost. So what we can do is that we have somebody now looking at our dashboards instead of us. And, and what we get is something like, oh, you know, uh, and in this natural language, like last week, this looked like this. Uh, you should have a look. And it's just a glorified alert, right? <laughs> but it's just simply a very low, lower end view how that information is consumed by other audiences or, or more business oriented audiences, which are now part of the consumers of the dashboards that we create. So our next steps is to, um, we call it ICE because it's cool. <laughs> and uh, so the chatbot ICE is, is going to be one of the solutions that we put in order to consume more information of the dashboards. And one thing for sure is, is that he will not miss a single data point. <laughs> that is the beautiful uh, thing about it. Um, and I think it, it will be very selfish to cross the Atlantic uh, to talk about all the things that, that we do on that side or the other side <laughs> of the world without uh, acknowledging the, the people that actually made this happen, this presentation happen. And, and, and these guys, as, as you can see, it's just for me a, a way to appreciate and to recognize that uh, I'm here being their voice, but all of them were, were the people who actually gain or develop the motivation to, to say, let's try to do something different. And, and our journey hasn't stopped now. Uh, our journey is, is, is just starting. We, we would like to carry on exploring the value of metrics. We have proven the, the, that metrics is, is, is our way forward, our communication, our language is, is being now based on metrics. And uh, with that, I would just like to invite you to, to yeah, to, to join this ride uh, together with us. Thank you very much for your time. I'm open for any questions. Yeah, if they might. yeah any questions? There must be a few. Wow, it's a shy group, not enough donuts. I will be in the hallway in the event of any. Thank you very much. For Thank you so much. Time. Appreciate it.